Hey everyone, it is me, Fashion Coder, and today we are going to go over why there is going to be the switch between Solidity to Go. I have had this question for the last like two weeks or a couple of days, and just looking at it, I was like, why, why would we switch, right? I was like, I just want someone to tell me. And then I realized, you know what? I could do that research myself. So I did today. And I wanted to come back to you to tell you what I found just because what I found is actually very interesting from a coding perspective. So just to go over what I'm talking about first is Richard Hart posted and gave a Pulse Chain update. So when he posted this, it, Pulse Chain was supposed to launch in May, is what he said. And it is clearly not me anymore. <laughs> so Pulse Chain update, the validator rotation slashing delegating code has been mostly rewritten and partially implemented in native Go outside the Ethereum virtual machine, thus not in Solidity for much higher throughput. So from a development perspective, I have been a software developer for a little while during my career. I ended up changing from it but at one of the companies I was at, they had their software in a specific program. And that program, you know, was coded in this specific language and it, it went out of date, okay? So they wanted to move their product to a new language. And the product was in this specific language for probably about 20 years. And they are going through like a three to five year process to get it over to this new language. So when I saw this, I was like, Oh my gosh, <laughs> like that is, that is definitely going to be something that could take a lot of time to go in and switch. And so that was like one of my concerns just reading this is, you know, switching programming languages can be a little uh, fuzzy when it comes to time, but I found some good information that I think will help and it, it actually won't be something that will take too much time. So. The first thing is, is it was in Solidity. Now I think some of the code still is in Solidity. They have just changed a couple of parts of it, which that tweet said. So what Solidity is, I found so many different articles on, you know, the information that I was looking up, but I found two articles I really liked. And so I'm going to just um, go into those. So Solidity is an object oriented and statically typed programming language that was designed to allow de developers to create smart contracts. Cool. So this was the first programming language that really was used in crypto. And it is designed on other programming languages. So that's like a really good thing just because learning a new programming language can sometimes be hard depending on what it is. And so it is based off of existing ones. So that can help with uh, the learning curve for a developer. Let's see. And in this article, it gave advantages and disadvantages, but this is the first thing that I want to read. Um, it was developed to write smart contracts on Ethereum and just like Java and Java, a virtual machine. So Solidity runs on the Ethereum virtual machine which if we just go back to Richard Hart's tweet, he did say that EVM, the Ethereum virtual machine, okay? So just like tying these things together. So Solidity runs on that. Now, um, advantages of it, it's large, it has an accessible community just because it is, uh, it was the first smart contract programming language, which is great. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, it offers, you know, all the modern um, type things like functions and stuff and libraries that modern programming languages use. So that's great. And um, the disadvantage that they gave here was just that it is a newer language. So there might not be a good community, even though Bob had said that there was a good community. So there is that. Now, that is Solidity. Something with Solidity is we have the operating system of a computer, okay? And what an operating system is, is if you don't know, it's like Windows, Mac OS, um, Linux, and there's lots of other ones too. But it's what like allows for the basic functions to happen on a computer, okay? So we have our operating system. 
I should have made a chart, but we're just going to use my hands for this. So you have your operating system. And then above that, they have this Ethereum virtual machine. So when you're trying to go through things, you literally have to go from where you're at, at this top layer, go through the virtual machine, and then go down another one to get to the operating system. And what we're going to find with Go is that they completely get rid of that system. So they go directly to the operating system. Okay, now I made a list because this other article, actually we'll go to it first. This other article's decently long. And so if you wanna read it, you definitely can. Um, but I will, I will summarize what I learned from it. Okay, so Go is a language and I think it's more known for Golang, which is Go language. Um, and that's how I've seen it in different articles, how it's been talked about. But I think people just simplify it and say it's the language of Go. Um, so it's simple. There's a short learning curve um, and there are lower chances of bugs. Now, kind of like to get into all of those things is it is also based off of other languages. And so going into it, there aren't as many nuances around the language, so it's easier to learn. In this article itself, um, they're talking about how they made their own blockchain and it took their developers only like a month to be able to like be highly successful in coding in it because everything was so straightforward. So I was like, okay, that's cool. Like, you know, if they're switching things in Pulse Chain, that's okay because, you know, if their developers are either proficient in this already or just learning it, it seems like it's a pretty in easy thing to use. So there's that. Um, there are lower chances of bugs and we're just going to jump down to this one. Um, it's a compiled language. So what that means is immediately when you run it, it's going to compile. So it builds all together and you see if there's any errors. And so a bug is an error. And in that sense, is you can see any of the errors and it's not going to be able to run until you fix all those errors. So it allows for a lower chance of bugs just like naturally because you fix so many of them when you are running it. Because if you have bugs in it, if you have these errors that pop up, you can't actually get to your program until you fix all of them. So that's awesome. Let's see. So it's overall simpler and faster development process because it is that short learning curve. It is very straightforward in the mechanics that it has. So if you know what a library is, it is very straightforward in that. And then it's easily uh, scalable to millions of requests and it's also widely adopted. So it's not like it's this brand new thing. It is still a widely adopted thing, language, but it's, it wasn't the first one like Solidity. And then I wanted to read this part because I thought this was really cool. So in programming, there's something called concurrency. And what I like, feel like it's easiest to relate to is something that's multitasking. So let me just read you this and then I'm going to explain kind of what it means. So concurrency is the ability to run several programs or several parts of a program asynchronously or in parallel, which improves the throughput. Usually threads are used to achieve concurrency in languages such as Java and others. So threads are something that they can just run all at the same time, which is really cool. In Go, methods called Go routines are used. So they're kind of like threads. And Go routines are methods or functions that can run with other functions in parallel. So certainly a Go routine takes about four kilobytes of space in RAM. On the contrary, a thread takes up about 1,024 kilobytes in RAM. Hence, Go routines take up 250 times less space than threads in other languages. This is crazy because like threads in programming are seen to be a really good thing. <laughs> and so the fact that this is literally 250 times faster is like mind boggling <laughs> to me. Like reading this, I was like, wow. And that's why they're able to um, scale to all of these huge requests of input, it's because they, you know, have these go routines that are able to work so quickly and they get the information through. So 
as I went through this, my conclusion was, is it totally makes sense why they would switch to Go. The first reason, reason is, is because it removes that middle layer. It removes the middleman of that virtual machine and it just goes directly from where you're at to the operating system. So that's awesome. Um, it's easy to adopt it as a developer and so the learning curve is not hard and all in all, it's simpler, it's faster. I mean, why would we not want that? So it seems like with what they did, the developers have been doing with Pulse Chain and switching over to Go in some of these aspects, it's a no brainer. So happy that they, you know, are taking the time to be able to go in and do this. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below. Excited for the Pulse Chain launch and I'll see y'all later. Bye.